In the Revishal Citizens Militia, there is only one Officer Superstar. This is his story. Let's check out this. Is it a doorway? I'm not sure. And then we'll go talk to the Ravers. In white, silver, and apricot films, the young mother of humanism stands above you. A crack runs across her body. She is impossibly tall, oval-faced and sad. A dark and radiant majesty. So we saw this when we first came in an episode or two ago. These light-up lungs are really pretty neat. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. Dolores Day. Cradled in her arms are a pair of glowing lungs, clearly visible from underneath her flowing dress. You should kneel. Okay, let's kneel. Your knees touch the floor. The floorboards are hard and cold. There, you kneel among the snowdrifts, diffuse light falling on your hands from beyond the glass. Let's close our eyes. The world is silent, but for the creaks and cracks of the massive wooden structure behind you, it covers you from the wind outside. Now open our eyes. The woman looks down at you, kneeling. She towers among her followers, architects, laymen, courtiers. There is a sad smile on her lips and a glint in her green-blue eye of what? Compassion? Remorse? She acknowledges the passing of someone who is still alive. So we have four choices here. I believe conceptualization is saying it's she's mourning the passing of someone who's still alive, so let's say that. As that terrible word passes through your mind, the lieutenant draws an X-shaped cross from shoulder to shoulder. Fascinating. Let's do the same as we get up. Your fingertips touch your chest four times. Then you rise from your knees into the apricot-colored light of the window. Above you, the woman still smiles her distant smile, sundered by the crack in the glass. Hey, let's do this encyclopedia check since we've got a 92%. How did I know this is the mother of humanism? Despite the damage you've done to yourself, the title appears lodged in your hippocampus. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. The innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state. Perhaps the most famous human being ever to have lived. No amount of Commodore Red can wipe her sad smile from your brain thing. It has survived the deluge and haunts you still, and will haunt you forever as it haunts all men. Wait, what exactly is an innocence? I've heard of the system. The highest category of historic individual, an embodiment of the world spirit. A ruler? More. An innocence is elected to office by the founding party, a precedent that has taken place a mere six times in the entirety of history. The legal system of the Real Belt is built to accommodate an ascetic rule should it coincide with our time. I'm honestly not sure I follow all of that. An innocence is infallible. The decisions made by one are not decisions. They are inevitabilities. What would have happened anyway? Only accelerated, packed into decades instead of centuries. An innocence is a continuous compressed event, a sacred human being. It is an honor and a glory to live when one is in office. Well, that clarifies it a bit and is super cool. It's like a, it's like an angel or a, a god among men. Is one in office now? No, we are alone. I am not surprised. Okay, well, when did she rule? 300 years ago, in the wake of the discovery of this Isola, the Insulindian, by explorers from the continent of Muindi. She is, among other things, the innocence of inter travel and the connected world. What else do I know about her? Many things. You know she was a woman of the court the wife of an influential Marchese, and eventually the principal advisor to Irene la Navigateur, Queen of Seren, modern-day Sir Laclay, also that she was gorgeous beyond beauty. Was this before she was the innocence? Or did she not actually lead? Okay, what else? Was she smart? Terribly. Women of the court were expected to play both contract bridge and chess sufficiently well to prove an interesting challenge to a man. A simple grasp in matters of philosophy, theology, and science was encouraged. 
She was, by all means, a kept woman. Pretty neato. She made the most of her position in the anti-Delorean court, a court visited by the most prominent thinkers and artists of the day. In secret, she was becoming the era's preeminent philosopher of the state, a scalpel, a piercing gaze. That's really cool. She used her position to transcend the bonds that had been placed on her. That's, that's really neat. Though. She was an almost preternaturally magnetic and intelligent individual. To her contemporaries, she appeared out of time, a messenger from the future of the species. We all fell in love with her, head over heels. Even before she was declared of innocence, her influence was tremendous. It was on her advice that Irene Le Navigateur sponsored a number of voyages into the Pale. A costly, often tragic endeavor, ultimately vindicated by the discovery of the new, new world. The piece of reality you're standing on. Awesome. Maybe we can learn more about these voyages. She was crowned two years after the first expedition returned, setting in motion what is widely considered the greatest era in history. The DeLorean era. Oh, we've heard about the DeLorean era. Wow. Wow, indeed. When her innocence was declared, and the queen she had advised for years fell on her knees before her, she was so overcome with emotion that her lungs started glowing in her chest. I guess that's what we're seeing pictured here. Bystanders reported golden filaments lighting the already sunlit chamber around her, clearly visible beneath her dress. So sort of like Tony Stark's atomic heart. That is why the lungs are the symbol of love for the cultures of the real belt. I want more. As did we all. The lands of the Mesk and the Occident, and even far away Supramawindi. Altogether, 21 of the 40 Mundial nations of the time immediately accepted Innocentic rule, even before her crowning. Crowning? In a city called Advesperaskit in Vesper Messina, her homeland, the name of the city means evening comes, but it happened on a winter's morning with the canals frozen and slush falling out of the sky. And Vesper Oskit. That is going to take some munging around in the subtitles, I'll tell you that. She was dressed in a white and pearl dress on an emptied out plaza with the crowd far away. Already, her thériers, the secret servicemen of the innocents, were worried about an assassination attempt. This is kind of weird. I don't care how she looked. I don't care. It doesn't hurt me. What a strange thing to say. It doesn't hurt me. But let's say she must have been beautiful. Oh, yes. She looked like humanity's young mother. A perfect mother. Insultingly beautiful. It was as if her face and shoulders and hands were covered in a soft down of underfeathers. You know this well. Very well. We know it very well. I wonder why. Midwinter snow was beating the cobblestones around her. A small attaché of officials stood by as her thériers placed a white gold wreath on her head. The crowning was mostly witnessed by secret servicemen. Then what? One of the men in this secret service killed her 22 years later. A young man who had come to suspect that Dolores Day was not entirely human, but something else. Wow, she was assassinated? Something that had walked in our midst, watching us stumble for hundreds, if not thousands of years, until it decided to interfere, interfere in the course of our history. We were supposed to come up with this ourselves. The man was reported to have screamed at the innocence. Wow, so he murdered her because he was afraid that they had lost free will, I guess. Astonishing. Dolores Day was shot in the chest with a fowling piece eight times. The man, thought to be insane, said he once touched her and her body had been unnaturally warm, like a furnace, and that sometimes, while on duty, he observed her forgetting to breathe for over ten minutes. This inhuman quality was witnessed by many others as well, glowing lungs and all. It is commonly attributed to mass hysteria and religious psychology. I wonder if it was actually true. Was there something terrifying about her? I mean, that certainly sounds terrifying. Terrifying. 
is a term too emotionally charged for your semantic memory, or what remains of it. But although she's often considered to be the greatest human being to ever live, there was something ominous about Dolores Day, constantly surrounded by her therriers. She was the most socially secluded and least self-aware of all the innocences. Some modern thinkers would consider her a war criminal for the campaigns she waged against the Mesk state. And then there were the resettlement programs. Wow, that's a giant left turn from what we have been learning about her to this point. The Mesk state tried to detach itself from innocentic rule. Parts of the world were experiencing whiplash from accelerating into secularism. Her mandatory education programs and mass resettlement of upstream Marguerite were problematic as well. Dissenters were suppressed by a military force she called the Army of Humanity, suggesting those who fight against it are not part of humanity. Oh boy, there's an otherness to it, an us and them type thing. She adored chess, yes, but also military war games. Dolores Day often holds a tiny tin soldier between her index finger and thumb in icons such as this. She was also blonde, the blondest woman you have ever seen, with green eyes the color of the Pacific, Mare Interregnum. Mare Interregnum. I guess the sea in the middle. Little is known of her Marchese husband. It's as if he vanished from history after completing his role, which was to introduce Dolores Day to court. In conclusion, yes, there is something lonely, paranoid, and even terrifying that people seldom mention, but feel when they think of her. Well, if you are a, a god among men, you are definitely going to be off-putting to people. This subtle terror is part of her iconography. Is it? I don't see terror here. Is this a sword, maybe? I'm not sure. Lieutenant Yefrater, you've stood there for over five minutes. The lieutenant's calm voice echoes in the cold air of the church. What are you thinking of, if I may ask? I don't think he's going to say she's somehow connected to the case. I don't, I don't really like any of these, actually. I'm going to say she's beautiful. That she is. A great sacred piece. I wonder what we are doing here, however. He takes his glasses off to clean them. In this church, I mean. The coast in general. We shouldn't linger. This isn't a good place to get lost in. Okay, Kim, thank you for your perspective on that. We have a visual calculus 72% chance to reconstruct the cracked glass, and it's white, so we can retry it if we fail. A jigsaw of broken shards falls into place in front of you, a ghostly reconstruction of the stained glass window. Before it was shattered, there was an older woman beneath the younger one, and a text, a light motif below them both. What shattered this mosaic? Unknown. <laughs> it zoomed in to just say unknown. Who is this older woman? The escutcheon on her throne says, Irene the Navigator. She is depicted as an older woman wearing thick-rimmed eyeglasses, holding a golden rites apfel in one hand and a scepter in the other. This is the queen her innocence day advised. Above, she herself is whole. So I guess this is called a Reichsapfel. I've never heard that word. And this thing I thought was a sword is actually a scepter. Small figures of wise men, common men, Worshippers walk up the stairs to stand at her feet. Secret servicemen, 30 years, stand in a row guarding her. It must have taken years to produce this work in all its dizzying detail. It is really a beautiful piece of art, and I mean that both within the game world and, and of course in the real world. Just the art style in this game is so amazing. The motto, what does it say? Below both women, in luminous black letters, Après la vie, mort. Après la mort, la vie de nouveau. Okay, I don't speak French, so I don't really know what that means, except I think this means new. And then, along the left side, après le monde, la gré. Après le gré, le monde de nouveau. Okay, more stuff I don't understand, but I will try to look it up, if we're not told what it is. After life, death. Oh, there we go. After death, life again. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. This is the great leitmotif of humanism, 
a summary of the effect of the discovery of this Isola, the Insulindian, on human thinking. A tremendous sea change akin to finding life after death. Cool. I guess I don't need to look it up. That is super interesting. Super interesting. Lieutenant, this used to say, after life, death, after... Death, life again. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. Oh, I guess he knows it. This exaltation is common in Dolorian sacralism. In the early years, it was even incorporated as the RCM slogan. No more, however. Why no more? It was deemed subservient to use a strongly moral intern related motto. We are already suspected of bootlicking. The sentence was also seen as too feminine. It was a macho thing. What is the RCM motto now? Justice, union, prudence, and force. Cool, I guess. Ice cool. <laughs> Kim. That's a funny response. Oh, that's funny. All right, let's step back. The mother of humanism towers above you. A wax painting on a cracked pane of glass. Nothing has changed in her expression. Okay, let's hit this one. This is Dolores Day. The old woman in the village was right. This must be the Dolorean Church of Humanity in Martinez, or the small Pinewood Church in some records. You knew of this place, Kim? It's a minor landmark, not easy to find. Most maps misplace it. It was built not long after Ravachot's founding, 300 or so years ago, by first-generation settlers. Cool. Yeah, we just learned about how the place was found in the Pale. On the coast of an uninhabited archipelago, where only animals had roamed before, in the wild reeds. Oh, like maybe the cryptid we've been looking for. What else do you know, Kim? There used to be seven safe churches on the coast. Lesetsa, they called them. The Seven Sisters. Only one remains. The rest were burnt in the revolution or used for building materials. And this one is pretty much worse for wear, too. We should be respectful here, although the building appears to be deserted. I do not believe we'll find anything connected to the lynching here. Something else, perhaps? He looks at the machinery lying around. I think this is another situation where we went a little bit out of order. Respectful? Is the lieutenant a follower of DeLoreanism? I doubt that he is, but let's find out. Kim, are you a follower of DeLoreanism? Yes, we all are. Her name, body, and rule are synonymous with humanism. The laws we enforce are DeLorean in origin. I didn't think you were spiritual. It's not spiritual. It's constitutional. The DeLorean system does not demand faith. Only accordance. You don't have to believe, you just have to fall in line. Let's turn away. Well, that was pretty awesome. We're going to do a little bit of a gear shift here and look at what we've got in our journal. Okay, so we need to talk to a cell about her associates. We've had this for a little while. Uh, I didn't look at it yet. I guess we can't get her to talk about her associates until we have set up the nightclub. And then this was updated because uh, we talked to Suna. So we got a new thought. I believe we got Wasteland of Reality. This new one, Wasteland of Reality. It's a temporary research bonus of minus two physical instrument and the research time is 20 hours, almost an entire day, oh my gosh. It has been brought to your attention that you're an alcoholic and that it's a sickness and it's killing you. You're crawling on your knees through life, your booze filled belly dragging on the ground, your brain now fuzzy, now in overdrive, your hair sticking together with today's cold sweat and yesterday's vomit. Perhaps they're right. Anything is better than this, even bone dry reality itself. Maybe you can quit. So this does seem like one that the improving himself superstar might be willing to do. We'll see. Okay, let's head off to talk to the Ravers. Let them know what Suna had to say. Oh, we, we can't run in here. gonna need to get some magnesium before we use the phone again I think we can afford I think we can afford at least three doses I know we can actually okay so let's talk to the ravers again oh, what is this fish what is that weird okay here we go hey gentlemen let's talk to them again Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? We can't do much with this logic one still. About the church, I checked it out. And? What happened? I talked to the crab man. Oh man! Who is he? 
What did you think? This is pretty funny. You were right. He's a true narcomaniac, and the way he climbs, it was terrifying. We're not saying that, though. He seemed okay, to be honest. Very spiritual, in fact. Really? Huh. Interesting. What's he doing in the church? Just preaching and praying from the looks of it. No matter. Is he going to be a problem? Problem? I don't know. Are you going to be a problem? Yeah. Noid is right. Let's get back to the point. What are we going to do about him? Actually, he told me he wouldn't mind the nightclub at all. I don't know, man. Doesn't it feel like a major hindrance to you? A spooky guy climbing around when all the guests are trying to have nice, friendly hyper time? I think you're just going to have to live with the crab man, guys. I guess it's not a massive problem, now that I think of it. Ah, uh, jeez. Everyone is welcome to dance till the morning light! Yeah! Yeah. You guys should listen to Egghead. Maybe. Uh... I guess we'll figure something out. Okay, but what about the other spooker? The one in Grandma's clothes? Did you see her? I would like something other than this, but we don't have a choice. I was using the mainframe when Suna, the former lead programmer of Fortress Accidente, appeared. A programmer? That's odd. What was she like? Did you ask her about the nightclub? She said you guys haven't been completely honest with me about your plans. Come on, man. Who will you trust? A spooky programmer or us? We just want to make the world a better place. I don't actually trust you. Feel the love! Get down and feel it! I might trust Egghead, but Andre definitely is sketchy. A half-hearted sell of something which does not seem worth buying. The love? No, I'm really not feeling it at all. You'll get there, believe me. When we've got our gear set up, things will be flowing and pumping. Sure, I believe you, Andre. Anyway, now that it's settled, how did she seem? I mean, disposition-wise. About the dance club idea. Yah, Oda 9. Rocking it or dropping it? She did not like the anodic dance club idea. What a pity. That's my favorite thing in the world. And she doesn't like it at all. A shame. What can we do now? Do you see a way out of this jam? And into a laser lit future of dance and unity? Not off the top of my head. Unity! Dance! She made it very clear that she won't leave until her own project is finished. And you can't just evict her? No, I won't evict her. We have to come up with a different solution, because I don't want to evict her. I want to find out more about what's going on with the Fortress Occidente and the research she's doing on the two millimeter hole. Look at you, honor man. No, Noid, he's right. Maybe we've approached it the wrong way after all. I'm sure there's a workaround. We can make a deal not to bother her. I think that's the right way to think of it, Andre. If that's okay with her, we only want to get in the church and spread the joy and ecstasy of music. The lines in the dark exist! Coexist! At least Crabman seems like an advanced being. He's hard. He'll understand. I don't know what you mean by hard, but I think he won't care, really. Yeah, he can do his climbing thing in the tower. And the programmer, does she like anodic dance music? Let's lie. Why not? Why would we lie? Would we lie to these guys? We don't really trust them fully. Alright, let's just be honest. She absolutely does not really truly despises it. Egghead cannot believe what you just said. It makes him pump the jam a little slower for a moment, but then he returns to the full swing of it. No worries, we'll figure it out. If coexisting fails, you can always muscle her out, right? If it's all okay with you, what do you think? I refuse to throw her out, but I can try convincing her. We're gonna proceed with some quest. Excellent, good luck my friend. Oh, wow, look at this. We now have a 42% chance here because we got another couple of points from Suna said something was amiss and confronted him about Suna's hint. Actually, I think we just got that third point confronted him about Suna's hint. Let's see if we can increase our logic a little bit. That's it for now. Goodbye, officer. We could get an automatic point for logic just by smoking some cigarettes. Okay, so we can get plus one logic for putting on these glasses. We can get another point of logic for putting on the jacket. And if we really want to, we can smoke some cigarettes to get an additional point. But now that our logic is eight, I think we're in pretty good shape. Okay, let's try again. Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? Okay, we now have a 72% chance, up from 48. Maybe everything is it quite as you've been told? Take a moment to analyze. A number of things don't add up. Let's take a look. 
I am super glad that we succeeded. It was godly. Ooh, we got a 19, and we only needed 16. Pretty amazing. Let's continue. How about gather around, kids? Okay, kids, now gather around. The young speed freak puts down a busted capacitor and looks at you. The one with the large head seems very enthusiastic about whatever you have planned. Their would-be leader is less amused. I bet he is. We could say, I got bad news for you, Andre. Things don't add up. Or we could say the much more interesting, sometime in the past, I'm not sure when and where, but betrayal was involved. I fell sick and became the shadow you see now. But before that, I have reason to believe I was a police detective. But you still are! I was good enough in this job to be awarded the rank of Lieutenant Euphrater. I ha could have been captain. Imagine that. What happened? I did. I happened to myself. That's a real downer! It is a real downer. Now, obviously, that might as well have been a thousand years ago, but there's still some detective left in me. The young speed freak is silent. This isn't the makings of a club. It's a tent full of laboratory equipment for manufacturing drugs. I have no idea how you arrived at that conclusion, but it's wrong. Look, we even have speakers. Uh, you do have speakers. It's true. One speaker. They have one speaker. Where is his friend? Did he lose his friend, this speaker? What do you mean, friend? The other speaker. You have only one. It's a one-speaker system. It's monodynamic. You wouldn't know the first thing about sound reproduction in anodic music. Other speaker. Pfft. That sounds like bullshit to me. This may be the brain damage talking, but you've definitely never heard of monodynamic or one-speaker systems. Yeah, I think it's bullshit. Because it is bullshit, monodynamic. You have no headphones. Wouldn't Cell need her headphones to spin tape? What do you know about spinning tape? Nothing. I know you pawned them, likely for lab equipment and drug ingredients. I'm sorry, but there is no lab equipment and no drug ingredients. The distilled water, it's a cornerstone of a clean lab. And of all cellular-based life. What's your point, Lawbringer? Oh, what is this? There's no need for me to pile on anymore, is there? Okay, I guess that's what we have to say. No shit. In short, you tried to use a police detective to set up a drug lab. That's... come on, that's... Against the law? I meant to say, not true. Suna said you've been lying about your plans. Your answer was unconvincing. Fuck, man. It's difficult to get along with some people, but we're trying to make an effort. We are on a mission here. So, Andre, what are we going to do with you? What do you mean, do? There's resignation in his voice. He's almost ready to drop the act. It wouldn't take a lot of pushing. So let's push. The optimal way to go about this would be indifference. It begins by you telling him you don't care about any of this. All right, let's try suggestions. Suggestion. I don't really care. I just wanted to crack the case. Do what you want, and I'll do what I want. Really? Of course not, really. I'm a cop. Now tell me what's going on, immediately. Or else? Not calling back up and hauling you all off to the pen, for starters. Okay, man. Okay. He raises his hands. Things are just so, so hard for an entrepreneur in this city right now. It's not like we lied when we said we want to turn a church into the wickedest club in East Revershall. Because we do! We totally do! I believe you, Egghead. We just need to turn it into a speed lab before. Of course you do. That's the that's the normal way things go. You start with a broken down church, you turn it into a speed lab, and then you open a club. To get our foot in the door. And why did you need me? Like I told you, spooky arseholes moved in while I was getting all this stuff together. A month ago, the place was empty. And now it's all spooked up. Yeah, they're not really spooky, are they? They're just kind of in your way. No, man. They're spooky, all right. It's just that they would also probably call the police if we started cooking speed in there. <laughs> yeah, I bet they would. And we are the police. But the sign was way off, too. I couldn't feel the love at all. Okay, thanks, Egghead. So, what now? Oh my god, we can ask for a bribe. We can arrest them. We can evict them. Oh, or we can say it wouldn't work without the lab, do what you have to to keep the club alive. Or we can do it clean. What would Superstar do? I don't think Superstar really has much of a problem with other people doing drugs. It just doesn't work for him. So let's say it wouldn't work without the lab. Do what you have to to keep the club alive. So we're going to proceed with both. Yeah! The young man's smile widens to inhuman proportions. His teeth beam in the floodlight. Respectable. I'm really feeling the science right about now. Uh, all right, I'll go talk to Suna again. Maybe there's a way to persuade her. I'm sure you'll figure something out. We can manage it with her if we get inside. Keep us updated about the situation. Maybe we can help somehow. Thrust his toothbrush towards us. I'm not sure what that's about. Okay, that's it for now. Goodbye, officer. 
Goodbye, Andre. Nice. Nice. I'm a little surprised we didn't get a task update, though. Okay. Let's go see if a cell has anything new to say. Hello again. Hello again, a cell. We've got this legendary empathy thing. It's a white check. We get one for giving her the hat, but it's still super low. And we're even wearing our empathy shoes. Your associates tried to use me to set up a drug lab. I'm guessing you knew of this plan. I did, and I'm sorry. For what it's worth. Which isn't much. Yeah, it's not really worth much at all. This is why I didn't go into the tent. Typical delinquency. Tim, you were right. Is that what you want to hear? You don't get to choose your posse. They choose you. Mine are idiots, but they're mine. I tried to talk Andre out of it. I even tried not to lie to you. Oh, really? Indeed. She merely tried to omit the truth instead. Instead, you opted to omit the truth. It's the same thing. I know, but I knew you'd see through their plan too. I'm not an idiot. I should have been able to control them, and I will in the future. I promise. Okay, let's see what that promise is worth. May I ask, what did you tell them? Once I cracked their play, I didn't really care. I'm not an arbiter. You're someone else's problem. Good call, detective. You can lose your mind trying to mediate everything these delinquents come up with. Fate will take care of it for us. I mean, we might help a little bit, Kim. We won't be anyone's problem. I'll get them under wraps, I promise. We're gonna do this empathy check. Why not? It's only 28%, but who cares? The tape recorder lies on the ice like a discarded toy. Let's pick it up. The device is cold to the touch. An angular Omicron logo adorns the yellow plastic cover. Underneath, you see a reel of tape rolling. You put the device back on the ice. Oh well, okay. I didn't expect to pass, so, and it didn't hurt us, we didn't lose any morale or health. That's it for now, SL. Thank you. I found all that Dolores Day information super interesting, and I hope you did too. Next time, we will try to convince Suna to allow the Ravers to set up shop. If you made it this far, please remember to like the video. And of course, make sure to spay or neuter your pets, but not both.